Welcome to Finance Basics 9 from TeachExcel.com. So here I'm going to show you how to find the future value of a uh, principal amount of money. So say you put so much in a bank account um, in so many years in the future when it's compounded more often than just once every year. So in this example, your principal amount will be or the interest compounded monthly. So let me go ahead and read this problem for you. Um, what we want to do is to figure out with an interest rate of 6% compounded monthly, that's the most important part, monthly, what will the value of a $5 million investment today be worth in six years? So previously when we talked about this problem or when we did this problem, it was compounded yearly. So the period number was six, the interest rate was six. Very simple, very straightforward. However, now, since it's compounded monthly, we have to adjust the rate and the number of periods accordingly. As well, if we had annuity payments, we would also have to adjust those. All right, so what I'm gonna do first is to go through this really quickly to show you what it's like if it's compounded on a yearly basis, just to give us some groundwork, something to go from. So to do that, it's very simply equals FV, open parentheses, now we need the rate, what is the interest rate? Remember, the first one I'm going to do yearly. So the interest rate for yearly would simply be 6%. Remember, you enter it as a decimal, so 0 0.06, comma, number of periods. Well, it is 6 years, so 6 for the number of periods. Then, comma, we don't have anything for a payment because there are no annuity payments here. So there's no equal uh, amount uh, or stream of payments every um, year or so. So we can put a zero, or we can just leave it blank and put another comma, whichever one you're more comfortable with. Now the present value here is going to be five million. I'm going to keep everything at, uh, in the units that it's presented. So for five million, I'm just going to put the full number. You'd probably actually just put five, but uh, five million. Close parentheses and hit enter. Now it comes up negative. I've talked about that a bunch before. The um, technical way you're supposed to fix it is put a negative sign in front of the present value. However, in Excel, I find it makes it much easier where you can create more robust formulas by putting a minus sign in front of the future value function. So that would be the answer, right? Now, let's go ahead and do the actual problem, compounded monthly. So equals FV, open parentheses. Now you're going to compound every month. So, the monthly interest rate, well that's not going to be 6%, because remember, in any problem, whenever it says an interest rate, if it does not specify for what period that interest rate is, by default it's going to be for the entire year. So what you have to do is to then divide 6 by the number of periods within a year. So we have to divide the 6% by 12, because we're compounding it monthly. There are 12 months in a year, so we need to do 6 divided by 12 to figure out what that is. And we get 0.5. So that means that our monthly interest rate is going to be 0.5%. Don't forget, this is a percentage right here. So we do equals FV, open parentheses, our rate is now 0 0.005, comma, the number of periods. Well, the number of periods before when it was yearly was simply six, because we want to figure out what it's going to be worth in six years. But now, we need to change the period amount accordingly. Since we got the interest rate for months, we need to change our number of periods to months. So we need to multiply 6 by 12. Now you could simply put 72, 6 times 12, or if you want to, you could put 6 times 12 as the actual argument. We could have done the same thing for the rate, but just personally me, I like to um, I like to have the whole numbers in here. I don't like to do the multiplication and division within the function. So I'm going to go ahead and just put 72. So 72 months, comma. Remember, there's no payment. So either put a zero for payment 
or simply put nothing and then put another comma and then for the present value just like before we put five million in you could be working in thousands and just put five thousand but I'm gonna go ahead and put the whole five million in then when we're done close the parentheses and that's about it so let's hit enter and see what we get seven million one hundred and sixty thousand so we get I'll put the negative sign in front of it so we get a little bit more we get about seventy thousand more if our interest is compounded monthly versus being compounded only yearly so you can see that it does make a significant difference when you're dealing with larger sums of money over longer periods of time now the most important thing to remember from this lesson is that the interest rate and the number of periods as well as I'll cover this in a later tutorial but the payment right here if it's an annuity all have to match so if it's compounded monthly that means your number of periods is going to be monthly which means you have to adjust your interest rate to be a monthly interest rate and then you have to adjust your payment amount to be monthly because remember by default this interest rate deals with one year or 12 months now really quickly the last thing I'll show you is how to do all of that math in the function instead of actually having to do it outside of the function so equals FV open parentheses our regular interest rate 0.06 divided by 12 comma number of periods 6 times 12 comma no payment so comma present value 5 million close parentheses go ahead and put the negative sign in front of the future value function and hit enter just like that so there we avoided having to do any um, sort of math outside of the cell and I did it all right here So that's about it for how to adjust um, a future value function for interest rates that are going to be compounded monthly. Now what I'm going to say is if you want to compound it, say, uh, twice a year, well then all you would have to do is divide 0.06 by 2 instead of 12, times 6 by 2 instead of 12. Because remember, everything that we're dealing with is really just in terms of periods right so if your interest is compounded uh, in the middle of the year so it would be every six months this interest rate has to be adjusted accordingly so two if you did it every quarter there are four quarters in a year you would divide it by four and you would multiply this by four so the way to think about it here is to figure out how many periods in your problem it takes to make one year right so if you're dealing with quarters it takes four quarters to make one year if you're dealing with six months well it takes two of those or two half years to make one year if you're dealing with months it takes 12 months to make one year so you just have to make sure that the number you divide by here and the number you multiply here all are going to be a number of units within a year and at first, this is kind of a tricky concept to get used to. Um, but it's really something that's quite important. And once you get the hang of it, it will just simply come naturally. So that is it for this tutorial for how to use the future value function with compounded interest monthly.